everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Ner, Chuck, and this, my friends, oh this, this is the Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And I'm sitting here with my boy, the monster. He's gonna be linking it up a little bit. And we're going to be talking about something I'm extremely passionate about, which is Chateauneuf de Pop. Let's talk about Chateauneuf de Pop. From the Southern Rhone region, I just got back from the Southern Rhone, where I actually got to taste some great Chateauneuf de Pop. Uh, some 07s that really rocked my pants off. And you know when that happens, you know you're in good shape. So I'm excited about what I'm gonna see from 07. I'm a little bit disappointed because the pricing is getting completely out of control. The prices are going up. You know, glass is more expensive. And Chateauneuf de Pop is prominent and getting more expensive, not to mention the euro is completely, completely whipping the dollar's ass. And so, you know, it's really difficult to see where the 07s are gonna land. And so obviously I'm very excited about some of the opportunities that are still in the US market at prices that I think are extremely fair. Um, and none of, yeah, that's here, that's here. Okay, good, yeah, the prices are here. I was a little bit worried that I wasn't gonna know the prices. It's one of those days, got a lot of things on my mind, but I'm super psyched to be back in the Thunder Saddle because we were ripping it. Yesterday's show was awesome. Thank you so much for the comments. They came hard, man. What is, what's the number at? Do you see? It was over four last time. Four hundo. I mean, thank you. Seriously, I keep rocking this show for you, but what you give me back, you'll never, ever, ever understand. It, it's unbelievable. Thank you. Okay, so Chateauneuf de Pop, Southern Rhone wines, very interesting area. Unlike many of its neighbors, the Chateauneuf de Pop wines allow an enormous amount of grape varietals in their blends. 13. Lucky number 13 mod. You know, things that are really interesting, but you know, very dominant on Grenache. You know, Grenache is really the grape that does a lot of damage in, um, in Chateauneuf de Pop. Good amounts of Syrah, Mouved, but you know, little interesting wines like Cunois. Um, white wines that they allow are really interesting. Oh, Tourette Noir is another red grape that they allow in the Chateauneuf de Pop area. I know a lot of you haven't had 100% Tourette Noir wines, right? I don't think I even have. Um, white wines are really prominent, Roussan and Viognier, but Grenache Blanc and Bourbignac. And so really just an amazing, interesting area where there's a lot of flexibility for the vineyard managers, the enologists, and most importantly, the winemakers to really play and carve and put their thumbprint on a wine. An area that was very known for rustic and unappealing wines in the US until a little wine critic from Maryland, a lawyer came along named Robert Parker and really single-handedly through this region, like I throw this WWF heavyweight belt on my shoulder, he single-handedly took Chateauneuf de Pop on his shoulder and made it one of the most prominent sought after premium wines from France in the world. So a really extraordinary story about he how he really built this area and its brand to a, a whole nother level and really made wines um, pretty serious and Bocastel was not gonna ever sell for 75 bucks without Robert Parker. So that area really do, needs to really uh, thank and kiss RMP's ass because he rocked it out for them. The Iron Sheik is in the house and I'm not gonna say anything other than Russia, number one, Iran, number one, America, Tui, still the most amazing stuff that anybody took the announcement in a ring with. Sheik, you're the pimp, baby. Anyway, excited about these wines and before we get into these wines, huge shout out to Tony Strow who's the man who picked this entire lineup. Three shot of the Pops and one shot of the Pop from Australia. Uh, an Australian Barossa wine that rolls in acting like a shot of the Pop. And so we're gonna be very excited about tasting all these wines. I have a calmness of excitement, Matt. Do you feel it? There's like a good vibe in this room. You're feeling it, right? Mm -hmm. Go with me now, come on. The oh. Vaniacs are, you know, the, mm, you know, the Vaniacs are just giving tremendous positive energy. The show is doing well. Uh, did a video on GaryVaynerchuk.com yesterday. You yes, saw that? Did. You know what? Link that up. I'm gonna do another one right after this because I'm feeling it, Mott. I'm feeling it. Anyway, let's get right into it. First wine is a very interesting wine, Jean-Pierre Bosson. Uh, this is a very interesting shot of the pop, the Elizabeth Chambellan, uh, 22 US dollars, 90 points, Robert Parker, and uh, I'm pretty interested in seeing what this wine brings to the table. This is a Via Vines, Old Vines, Chateauneuf de Pop, um, and a ridiculously well-priced wine. 22 bones, 90 RP. Let me tell you, I just came back from France just two days ago, three days ago, and with the dollar and the euro, Cote de Villages are rolling in at 22 bones, folks. So. I'm sure the euro is gonna eventually fix itself, but I'm not so sure it's gonna be anytime soon. And if over the next 24 to 36 months that's the case in our short-term reality of the American culture and conscious, how we roll, this is an absolute stealing value on paper at 22 bones, 90 points. I'm dying to try this wine. Let's give it a whirl, a sniffy sniff, all the things we do here on The Thunder Show. 
aka the internet's 13th most popular wine program, and that's kind of tough. Sniffy Sniff. Ooh, 13th most popular, 13 grape varietals. This is rolling. Little hints of raspberry. I like the cherry sauce action that I'm feeling on this wine as well. I'm getting a little bit of bark. Man, I'm really focused today. I'm zoned in, mod. I really want to get into these wines. I want to bring tremendous content and value to the Vaniacs. I want them to feel like they're smelling and tasting these wines. Help me do it. Keep giving me that energy, mod. This is gorgeous. Really nice, a little hint of mint leaf, like almost like a little tea action on the finish, and that's really what I'm getting. I'm actually getting a little bit of like grinded black tea, yes, mm, uh, a little bit of like cherry sauce, hints of strawberry, and this beautiful minty component on the tail end, which is something I wouldn't expect. A little bit of like duck fat coming through on the nose as well, which is always good fun. Let's give it a whirl. Great mouthfeel, really nice exotic blackberry now coming through on the mid palate. A little awkward on the finish, high tins. These wines have been open for about five hours, so we've really, we're starting late today. Uh, we're really giving these wines a nice opportunity. on something I'm, I have to give you that I'm really excited about. Take cherry sauce and mix it with horseradish, like really good white horseradish, and that's what this tastes like on the finish. This is a complex and complete wine that I think is extremely well made. I'm a little tainted. Had I done this show a month ago, before I tasted an enormous amount of interesting wines from Cote de Roussillon, Cote de Ventoux, Pic Saint Loup, and all these different little areas within the southern France area that are bringing thunder at 13 to 17 dollars, and we'll be talking a lot about those wines in the future. Uh, we've been hot on them. I would probably be losing my mind now. But as you know, as you've been watching the Thunder Show, your reference points change, your palate changes, and your thought process changes. And a lot of the ways I impact my scoring is on the QPR aspect of it. Quality price ratio for all you new Vaniacs out there. So I'm very enthusiastic about this wine. I think Parker hit the nail on the head. I'm also gonna go 90 points on this wine, which to me makes it a screaming purchase, especially for a lot of people that have never had a Chateauneuf de Pop. I cannot believe that at this price point, at this entry, and this quality, you can still find these wines. This is a buy at 90 points, no doubt. Um, 22 Moons is extremely fair for Chateauneuf de Pop, especially where things are going. I guarantee if we were to buy this wine today, it'd be $30 because of this huge influx we've seen over time. 2005 is a very big vintage with a lot of fruit. There's a little bit more hedonistic fruit bomby than I'm normally used to. Uh, Parker likes that style. I'm a little bit more toned back, a little bit to the old world, you know, being born in Russia and everything. But a very substantially well-made wine with good structure, great vanilla extract in the mid-palate transition flavor with the cherry bombs. I'm looking for this wine to easily last three to seven years, but drinking now and over the next, you know, 12 to 18 months very firmly, then a shutdown period for a year, but then looking for it for three to five years to really rock it out. Great with duck, great with foods. I mean, just a great Great wine, but you can easily drink it by itself because it's that open and even has that hint of lilac floral at the end. That's why this wine brings the thunder. That's why this wine is absolutely worthwhile to seek out. And that's why I just rocked it on the Thunder Show. Did you just see that, Mont? Did you just see that last minute and a half? Let's move on. I'm feeling it, man. Fe you know, this is what happens when you're away. All those Vaniacs that have been telling me, take a couple days off, you know, da da da. They might be onto something, man. I mean, I won't, but I gotta tell you, the heat is just like rising up with the mini. Um, Domaine du Pierre Chabouche, uh, also from Jean-Pierre Bosson. Uh, this is the La Miranda uh, Chateauneuf de Pop 2005. This also is 90 points Robert Parker, 26 US dollars. This is like a nice second cousin to this guy over here. Related all the way, similar price points, similar Parker score. This is a lot of fun, great choice. What, big up to Tony Stroh for picking it out. And now I'm gonna surprise attack. A huge happy 40th birthday. Huge, you know, these wives that are just rocking it out for these requests, oh, that reminds me, I have a little letter to read on the show that I thought was just brilliant, and summed up a letter I'm getting a lot of and might lead to a new Vaniac t-shirt. Um, big shout out, 40th birthday to Brian Pals in Minnesota, 
Big up to the Vikings. You still can't beat the Jets, but we rocked you last year, two years ago. So just remember. Anyway, big happy 40th birthday. Thanks for being a big time Vaniac. Thanks for supporting and loving the show. Your wife, Sean, is obviously brilliant for asking me to give you a birthday shout out and she cares about you and that's just awesome. Thank you. I'm humbled by that and uh, wanted to reach out. Oh, and while I'm at it, Mott, link it up twice, baby. If you didn't catch yesterday's episode, there's a huge opportunity to taste along with me on April 1st. You can buy the two pack or the one pack. We're gonna have all three wines on the show. We broke it up to give a lot of people an entry. Uh, they're flying out, they're almost gone. To be honest, last time we had a lot of people complaining, so if you're interested at all to taste the wines that we're gonna have on a Thunder Show, on the first, we do have a two pack and a one pack, and we're doing free shipping, and we lower the price of each, I mean, we do it right here, man. We're all about the freaking Vaniacs, baby. March 29th, big ups. We're only one week and one day, two days away. We're gonna rock it here. Already 100 confirmed for Basilico, three to five. I'm hoping some other people will start some dinner parties afterwards. Julius, I'm calling you out. We talked in the office the other day that you're gonna help expedite. So so let's do that and uh, let's taste this wine because I'm getting scatterbrained. Sniffy sniff. Now this is a little bit more peppery, venison action, almost like ripping boar's head off his body and smelling the blood and getting that, you know, that juiciness coming through. Add some interesting floral, there's some similarities. That violet component I talked about in the tail end, that's coming through much more in this wine. I like the raspberry sauce. Let's give it a whirl. The La Marande is um, a little bit drier, a little bit more extracted, a little more introverted, a little bit more closed, a little more hibernation action, but the Bayer's tush is sticking out of the ground kind of thing, right? It's like half-assed, half-pregnant. Ooh, half-assed, that's what that might mean. Um, Well-made, um, very similar style. The strawberries are coming through on this as well. I get a gorgeous plum component that is undeniable on this wine that the other wine doesn't have. There's a little more oomph to it, it's a wine that I think will be cellared and preferred a couple of years from now, um, but it's drinking solid now. Um, it's a little bit actually more my style than the last wine, yet I think it's a little bit more broken. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about the mid-palate transition. I find it very hollow in comparison. Um, and the finish is a little hotter, 14.5, 14.5, but again, you can never trust the back label. You know they're always a little bit different. They've got that half a percent they can play with, so this could be 15 and this could be 14. Remember. It depends on where they really want to go with it. Um, but all solid, I mean, to me it's a little bit more disappointing. I'm not as excited about it, which is interesting. Um, but I don't know why. Um, I'm gonna go 88 plus points on this wine. I'm gonna give it a pass. I think there's other ways to go. I find it less exciting, and that's where I'm at. Pooey. All right, let's move on. Chante Pedri. Uh, Domaine Chante Pedri, uh, Pedri uh, Chateauneuf de Pop, 2005. Again, a very interesting vintage in the Rhone in, and especially in Chateauneuf de Pop. A lot of people really hot about it. 80% Grenache, the rest is Syrah, Mouvedre, and a little Muscardin. They're rare, they said the rare Muscardin. Uh, a small amount of white wine was also used, Grenache Blanc. Claret, which is an unbelievably important grape in the area. Not Claret, C-L-A-R-E-T, like you're used to, but C-L-A-I-R-E-T-T-E. Very, very widely planted grape that I got to know a lot better on my recent trip to the southern part of France, and so I've been interesting about that. 18 to 24 months in French oak. Uh, 88 points, 88 to 92 points Tanzer. Uh, 25 US dollars. Let's give it a rinse and a whirl and a thought and an analyzation, and all that, and a bag of chips. Lots of action on Twitter. If you haven't seen, Santa Gary V. You know, those thunder wristbands, just saying. Just saying. Great color, because that's how they roll. Let's pour a little bit out for all the Vaniacs that are no longer with us. Remember Tony, way back two years ago? Mm -hmm. Tony the photographer, we loved him, right? Yep. Tony Dunn? I think that was Dunn. I'm good, right? how I roll. Anyway, sniffy sniff. Now this is a little bit more interesting. This is already much more up my normal alley. 25 bones, again, still value driven. Um, I like the fleshiness of this wine. Again, you know, just rip off some of that deer arm. Uh, sorry deer, but I have to, to smell it. 
similar to the last wine that's a black pepper for days. I mean, this is rolling heavy. Throw some white pepper in there. That's how it's liked. That's how it's interesting. And that's what this has. There's a great cassis component that I'm enjoying quite a bit as well. I'm also widely, oh, I might start doing this more often, just like having it and talking. Do you like that? Kind of echoes in the glass too, Matt. Do you, do you, do you see the numbers moving up a little? Anyway, um, really interesting like V8 juice kind of thing going on. This is really working. Um, leather, oh, got it. You know what? This might be my new thing. I'm not kidding. I do not know if I get here without doing what I'm doing now. I'm gonna tell you right now, I really got there. I'm gonna tell you exactly what this wine smells like. Come on, smell this. As I completely kill this and knock it out of the park. This wine, my friends, flat out, the Chante Petri 2005 Chateau of the Pop, more than any other wine maybe I've ever tasted or smelled, and it's gonna make sense because some of the components I was already walking about. This wine, put it back in your nose, Mott, so you can follow along, smells exactly like a Slim Jim. Have you ever had Slim Jims? Yeah. Like a lot of them, like I used to drink, eat like 20 of them at the behind the register when I was 13. That's not. This wine, ooh yeah, slap into a Slim Jim. That's exactly, exactly what this wine smells like and that's pretty damn rad all. And dead on point. If you were able to find this wine and you could smell it, please email me. I'm not asking for emails much anymore because I'm getting bombarded. But this one I wanna know if you really roll and you could smell it. Five hours decanting, Talk and smell, Slim Jim, big time. Let's give it a whirl. Beef jerky, a lot of beef jerky. That's what's going on here. I hate to be Robert Parker's bitch, but I'm telling you right now, he nailed it. These wines are so important because they are rolling with serious value. 25 bones, I don't give a rat's ass, California and Australia, I'm saying it. Not that I'm the biggest Francophile, but you are going to have to work your ass off to get the balance that these wines bring to the table. These wines are so gorgeous. This has a great strawberry bacon fat. Let me get a little bit of duck pate. I had a great wild boar pate while I was in France. Some similarities there, it's the black pepper, it's a little bit of the green leaf, but the structure, style, freshness of fruit, Balance, and everybody knows balance is the key. It's like the force, my friends. It's like the force. You have that balance of wine, and so many wines from the new world, and I'm gonna throw Spain in there because they're acting like the new world. It's like that 48-year-old cousin that still wants to be 25. You know what I'm saying? That's you, Spain. I'm just saying, that's you. So, this wine rolls in balance, and it brings integrity and truthness, and tastes like the vineyard. They want the terroir to speak to you. Whereas in California, Australia, a lot of manipulation. Not always. Lots of California guys are rocking it out. Tons. Especially in Paso Robles and just, you know, the South, Santa Barbara. Um, same thing. You know, Clare Valley, you know, Langhorn. Eh, Langhorns. But, you know, there's spots. And I don't want to generalize. I, listen, I drink plenty of Australian California wines. But I'm just saying, from a percentage standpoint, this is what I'm loving about Chateau de Palmen. Some of the producers have changed, but this is truth, my friends. This is Carl the Truth Williams in a bottle, and I'm loving it, and he's biting a big ass Slim Jim, my friends. I'm gonna score this wine 92 plus points, get totally on Steven Tanzer's bandwagon on this as well. I totally agree, I'm loving this wine. This is made for me, but if you don't like Slim Jims, and you don't like V8 juice, and you don't like you know a plum split in half that's really, really sweet, and mix that all together, then this may not be for you, because remember, if Nothing else, if nothing more. What this Thunder Show is about is who gives a crap what I say or what I think. I'm just trying to give you a pedestal, a little fun, a little 25 minutes of entertainment and education about the vino. But what I expect from you, because it's you with a little bit of me, right, is to go out and try different wines. Stop drinking the same old thing. I know you like Pinot Noir, I know. Brandon M says I don't like Sangiovese. You're wrong. Step outside and think outside that box, my friends, and your experience on this vino, vino, Vino will explode to new heights and you'll long forget about that clown from Jersey on the video blog because you will be in control of your wine world. This is a big time show. I'm having fun, man. I'm so glad to be back. God, 
Torbrek, 2005 Barossa, the Stedding. By the way, your comment number from yesterday is a big factor of this energy. I'm just saying, you can crank this little monkey. You can crank this little monkey. 2005 Torbrek, Barossa, the Stedding. 60% Grenache, 20% Matado, and 20% Shiraz. 93 points, Dr. J. Miller. 26 US dollars, and Tony Stroh must be loving himself right now because he is cranking out one stellar thunder show. I mean, you know, when they put me up against heroes, I think I can take, Matt, I think I can take that damn little cheerleader. Sniffy sniff. And this is why I love life. If there was just some sort of smell of vision action, you know, 10 years from now, come on, Google, come on. If somebody could say, Dave Morin at Facebook, step up, you're a genius. Somebody do something. Because if the Vaniacs right now could smell this compared to that, even though similar grape varietals, you will understand why wines are different where they're grown. It's hot in Australia, they go for higher yields, they, they're they looking for bigger extraction, over the top goodness, and this wine has it, in spades. <laughs> Starburst reduction sauce, just candy, Skittles, Starburst, your old Woolworths, five and dime, candy store, my friends, candy store. It's like that kid in ninth grade that brought candy all the time and his book bag just smelled like you wanna eat it, you wanna eat his book bag, that's what this smells like. This wine is loaded with Dots candy, remember Dots? Love those things because I'm getting, the fruit is not much. Just smell this, just I want you to you know, hear your reaction because you can see it how, I mean, you just tasted a wine with similar grape, right? Yeah, it's just, this I smell. Yeah, I mean, that's another great point. See what Mott, with a more immature palate, sorry to call you that Mott, but you know, not, not a guy that's always drinking the vino, but he's the best, but he's giant fan, screw him. Anyway, he says, now I can smell this. So see what happens, these New World wines, why are they doing so well in the US in this explosion, this nirvana of new wine drinkers in the US? Because you can smell it, you can taste it, you can enjoy the fruit. You understand the tangible aspects of the fruit flavors that are exploding in your mouthpiece, my friends. So I, I'm down for that and I love it. Somebody just emailed me, a new Vaniac just turned 21 and he was like, you know, I'm liking New World wines and I hope to like the subtleties of the others. First of all, don't worry about it. You embrace the thunder and the rainbow and it shoots up all your grill piece, fine, God bless. I think when you drink a lot of it, like I have, because I have to drink so many of these wines, like today, I drank like 40 of them, you start realizing, no, that's not why this show's like that, I spit every wine. Anyway, uh, you start realizing that this starts tasting like too much candy. It's like the dessert theory, right? When you eat too many desserts, I mean, as much as you love chocolate cake, all the ladies out there, I know what you're talking about. As much as you love it, right? I'm telling you, if you ate it every day, you're gonna part ways. And so, in the beginning, people are gonna gravitate to New World fruit bombs, fruit, explosion, fruitness, happiness, la 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 la, plums, cherries, candy, they're gonna go for it. Bananas, runts, sprees, give me it all. Nerd candy, you're gonna love it. But later on, you're gonna find the subtleties of the old world that are gonna go that way, and then you'll come back. It's a journey, my friends. It's a goddamn Wizard of Oz in this wine world. Let's give it a whirl. I mean, there's nothing to say. This is loaded with strawberry and candy. It's a hedonistic journey of over-fulfillment. It's like those guys that I heard about flying in from Iraq or Iran or some, I'm not really quite sure, the Middle East somewhere, came to a club in Miami, ordered 28 bottles of Cristal, shook them up, sprayed them on everybody and got back into their private jet. That's called silliness. But if you're rolling that deep, God bless you, my friends. Do it, do it like you want. And that's what this wine reminds me of. This makes no sense. It's too over the top, but there is no doubt in my mind that millions and millions of people are adoring this style because it's just guard darn delicious. Mott, sip on it, suck on that bottle, tell me what you think. I don't even need to hear it. Mott, I mean, people are out there like, mm. it's a party in your mouth. Listen, I understand, this stuff is god darn delicious. The sweetness level, the sugar abstracts, the deliciousness. I wish we had the double cam right now. I know you're liking it, Mott, because the fruit is pure and it's explosive and it's delicious and you understand it and it makes sense. And that's how it rolls. What do you think, Mott? There's a reason Dr. J likes it 93 points, right? I mean, it's good. It's, it's sweet. The candy's there. It's like, think about it. When you're a kid, you liked candy a lot more than you like it now. Or you, you know where I'm going, right? Before you experienced other flavors and your palate developed. I like it. It's fine. It's hedonistic. It's over the top. It's an 89 pointer for me. I'm sorry. It's just where it's at. But again, that's me. I want to give you the aspects of the wine, some little education about the Rhone. This is from Barossa. The Stedding Torbeck is a rocking winery. Uh, everybody knows it. Powell, the whole nine. Good stuff. But for me, just too over the top. I got to notch it down for that. It doesn't have the balance. <sighs> Pretty pumped. All you non-hardcore maniacs who 
think the show was too long. How long is the show set right now? 24. 24 minutes, pretty long. You're more than welcome to leave now. I'm going to read this letter, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Elise Brookings, Elise Brookings, Brookings, excuse me, sent me this email not too long ago, and I thought I'd share it on the Thunder Show because it's really classic, and because I get about 60 of these a week, and I just want to go with it. Plus, there's a lot of nice things about me. Hi, Gary. So is there any way you could be a little less addicting? No, 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 don't get me wrong. You're great. I love your show. But I have to admit that the only reason I'm aware of your show is because of my wonderful and very loving boyfriend. We get a lot of that. It's funny, a lot of the boyfriends bring their girlfriends and wives in. And at first the wives are like, ah, that guy's so annoying, the voice. Oh, you're watching that idiot again? But then they realize, you know, I'm educating, you're drinking better wine, I'm talking about happiness and love, better family life. You know, you, you all know what I'm about, Vaniacs. It's all about family, right? It's all about the fams. I mean, it's all about the fams. Call your loved ones, do your thing. You know, buy wine to bring people together. That's what this thing's got. I'm telling you there's a secret in here and it's bringing the friendships together. I'm just saying. <sighs> Boyfriend, who seems to have fallen into an addicting track of the almighty they ner chuck there is something there. I don't think people have been realizing. We've been pumping something when I say they, nerd, Chuck. It's like, like this guy, like this guy. It's Mott, actually, in the background. Like this guy. You don't hear it. Play Wine Library TV backwards, peeps, and you'll freak on it. I used to enjoy a bottle of wine with him, but apparently now we have to go. We have you along the ride. And although I love tricycles, third wheels aren't standard on most bikes. Nice, nice line, if you know what I mean. That's a good line by her, right? Get, quote, Gary said this one is supposed to be really good for the price. It's 90 points, he claims, in studio, uh, it's statically. That 90 point thing there b bothers me. I've got to think about that. Or this. I've ordered a bottle of this wine from Gary. Look, see, I told you it sold out by now. I got the order in before it sold out. <laughs> That's kind of cute. I like that. His, his eyes are unwavering from the glow of the computer screen. Volume turned up. It's over. It's done. He's a, an official lurker. Oh, she's calling him out. Oh, Gary, I do love your show, and you are one fascinating individual. But may I please have my boyfriend back? I didn't know you two would move so fast. He's on a first name basis with you now. Wait, what? You're giving away free Apple TVs? I'll sniffy sift to that. Rock on, Mr. Vaynerchuk. Vaynerchuk. Rock on. Elise Brooking. She killed it. She's awesome. That's so cool. And it leads me to the 60 emails I get a week, which is this new thing I'm hearing about called Vaniac Widows, WLTV Widows, people that want their man back. We want him back. He's only giving me 30 minutes and you're getting 30 minutes. That's why I'm trying to make today's show 30 minutes. We're gonna work on that t-shirt. Is there any Vaniac out there that wants to design that? I think so. I heard this thing that I have to be 21 or older now to design our stuff, some bull crap. Anyway, question of the day. What are you drinking this weekend? Because I'm going to pick four of the wines that you guys claim you're gonna be drinking and I'm gonna drink them as well this weekend and I'm gonna call out a winner on Monday. A flat out winner. A freaking winner. The person that drank the wine. As a matter of fact, I may drink all the wines that you guys picked because there's a lot of basketball. I'm going to be, oh. Okay. Anyway, somebody's going to win something because that's how we roll. Because you, with a little bit of me and shows like this, we brought it, Mott. We're changing the wine world.